Okay, I'm running another operation on the stainless steel brake calipers. I am doing the bottom. There's a angled relief that needs cut. Um, it's right here. Plus on this side, there's a relief that goes here. The other one doesn't get that. Um, so I'm just doing a 3D profile with it, uh, running this way. Let's see a few lines down here where the angle gets a little steeper. Um, could have avoided that if I would have went this way, but I didn't. So, I've got the other one running in here right now. So it, it takes quite a while. Uh, let's see, where are we at? About an hour and 23 minutes. still has a ways to go. So again, these are just taking way longer than I thought they would. But it is what it is. So I'll I took some time lapse videos of this one. Um, ran into a couple things that I change midstream so enjoy So the reason I just stopped this, if you made it through the time lapse, it's leaving a really good finish. I'm doing a 20,000 step over with a half inch ball mill, which in my experience always leaves pretty good finish. It starts to get a little rougher as it uh, the angle gets a little steeper over here, but it's a good finish. The reason I stopped it, when I did my 3D adaptive roughing, I think I should have went with a finer step. If you can see this is pretty rough and it's leaving a lot of material for my ball mill. So I, I went ahead and I ran this side and I just slowed the feed way down on the first couple cuts um, but I wanted to stop it go back in I, I'm I'm learning fusion so I'm gonna change it to where I take more away with the adaptive roughing so that the ball mill is not doing as much work I, right now that's the only ball mill that I have I want to keep these running and I don't want to mess it up so I'm going to go do that code and we'll see what happens.
So I adjusted the cam on the roughing tool path and I'm happy with this side. That should be fine for the ball mill to come back and clean up. This side, however, is still got a whole lot more material there than I would like to see, so I think I know what to do. Forgive me for not making videos actually showing the cam part. I'm still kind of learning fusion, so I'm not that comfortable making videos. Plus, I don't really have a good way to take a video of me doing that. So, I'm going to go try to get rid of this. Try that again before I run the ball mill. Okay, so, yeah, that looks way better. What I did was I, uh, I did not edit my adaptive toolpath. I just, on the 3D ball mill, I'm just using a parallel path going this direction. I just uh, did the same path with the rougher um, with a 40,000 step over. So on the ball mill I'm using a 20, on the rougher I'm using a 40, so that I'm pretty happy with that. It's going to add some time to the run time, but I'm more concerned about having a good finish and also just being able to hit start and walk away from it without having to worry about if a tool's going to break or crash. So I'll run the ball mill now and see how it looks. So I just had a crazy idea. As I'm looking at my parts sitting here on the table, I am going to attempt to put these two in, as long as I can keep them aligned, I'm going to attempt to put both of them in and just run the toolpath on both. That way, it's one less time I have to change out the part and longer that the machine is just going to run unattended, hopefully. So who thinks it'll work? We'll find out here in a minute. The double <clears throat> is done. Looks like it worked just fine. So, this is really just aesthetic, so it's not that critical. It's not going to affect the way that they function. I think the guy is going to uh, actually powder coat them black when they're done, so even if there was some little imperfections, which I don't see. I won't be able to see them anyway. So that did work. So I'm going to flip it over. Uh, the whole top is going to be radiused. So I might be able to do the same, same thing. Put two of them in there at once. But done enough for today.